appreciate that. I love hearing people speak about Jesus. Amen. Yeah. Just a thought as we close this morning. Thank you again, Tim. Choir, y'all did wonderful. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. King closed with the song, No Holy Night. What was it that made that night holy? It was just another night. Just like today is just another day without Christ. What made it? What made that night the holy night? Well, Luke 2 tells us that there was a birth that took place that night, wasn't there? Right. The King of Kings and Lord of Lords was born into this world. Right. Luke chapter 2 and verse 10 tells us that there was an announcement made. The angel said, Fear not, for I bring you good tidings of great joy for all people. The book of Luke gives us several reasons why that night was a holy night, a special night. Verse 12 tells us that there was a sign, there was a way that they could know when they had found the Christ. There are signs today. Oh, there are yeah. announcements that are made today. There was a birth that took place on that first Christmas. Verse 15 tells us that there was a decision made. When the angels went away, the shepherds decided to, decided to go see if they could find him. Right. You see how that translates for us today? Amen. There's a decision for us to be made today as well as it was <laughs> for them. Verse 16 tells us that when they went looking for him, they found him. Isn't that amazing? Right. What made that night holy? Oh, there's several factors, isn't there, that enter into that. Verse 17 tells us that after they found him, there was a witness. They went and told everybody what they had found about that child. You see how that applies for us today? A birth, a sign, an announcement, a witness as they go and tell about it. And then it tells us in verse 18 that there was an effect. Everybody that heard of the witness of these shepherds, they were all amazed. And then it tells us as it gets close to the end of that part of that story, in verse 20, that there was joy because of it. Can you see what made that night holy and different from all the rest? Not just a, another night. Can you see what can make this day holy and different from all the rest for you? Not just another day, but a day that celebrates a birth. It's amazing how sometimes the real meaning of Christmas just kind of slips over us, doesn't it? And just gets by us. December the 17th, 1903, two boys from Ohio visited North Carolina out on the Outer Banks. They built them an airplane in their bicycle shop and they brought it down here. Remember that? You remember reading about it. Some of you may remember it. <laughs> but you remember reading about it anyway. And as soon as they had flown there, of course, they flew four, three or four times that day, but the first flight they flew 120 feet. Oliver and Wilbur, well, Oliver and Wilbur Wright. And they sent a, they sent, listen to this, they sent a telegraph back to their dad and said, we have flown 120 feet. We have flown 120 feet. Their sister, I think her name was Elizabeth, I can't remember what her name was, but her sister grabbed the telegraph, went running down to the newspaper office and gave it to the city editor. Her brothers had just flown first heavier than air flight that actually flew a controlled flight. The, the, the telegraph simply said from the brothers, we have flown 120 feet, 120 feet. we'll be home for Christmas. The city editor read the telegraph and said, well, well, that's great. The boys will be home for Christmas. <laughs> the birth of modern aviation, the planes that you and I fly overseas and thousands of miles, the birth of that technology, well, well, the boys will be home for Christmas. Wow. Do you see how we can miss the real meaning of something oh, significant? Yeah. Just flew right by and thought about the boys will be home for Christmas. How many of us here today? Well, the boys will be home for Christmas. We're all going to gather at Mom's house and we're going to have turkey and ham. But guys, the real meaning of Christmas.
Christmas just flies right over us sometimes. What can make this day a holy day? <coughs> Same thing that made it for those shepherds and Mary and Joseph that day. A birth that took place. An announcement that's been made. A sign that reveals who it is. Oh, yeah. A desire to visit. A visit to be made. And then the results that take place because of that visit. While Barbara plays softly on the piano. I want you to bow your heads this morning. And I really believe in all my heart that there's some people here this morning that God's Holy Spirit has touched through this story. And this is not going to just be another day. This is not going to be just another Christmas. This is the day that God's Spirit is going to touch your little heart. And God's already done it. And He wants this to be something special. God's Spirit has led you and drawn you with a desire to seek Him today. You may not have even recognized it when you came in church this morning. You may have thought, this is just going to be another day. I'll be glad it's over. We can go have lunch. Boys are going to be home for Christmas. <laughs> the birth of the greatest event in the history of modern America. And you missed it all together. The boys are going to be home for Christmas. Oh yeah, the boys are going to be home for Christmas, all right. But maybe today Christ is asking you to come home. Right where you're sitting today, just maybe God's Holy Spirit is touching your heart. And only you know that. But maybe today God's Holy Spirit is touching your heart. And drawing you to Him. And all you have to do. God said in His Word. In, in Romans 10, 13. Whoever calls on the name of the Lord. Shall be saved. Today. Those of you that God's speaking to. Today I encourage you. I ask you right where you're sitting. Call on the name of the Lord. Lord Jesus. I am a sinner. You came and was born that first Christmas. You lived 33 years and you died on Calvary. And you paid the penalty for my sins. I'm asking you to save me today so I can spend an eternity in heaven with you. Thank you, Jesus, for that sacrifice you made. I accept it. I accept it today and I give my life to you. In Jesus' name, I pray. Every one of you that prayed that prayer this morning, as we're leaving in a little bit, I want you to come to me and I want you to tell me, Pastor, I prayed that prayer and I want you to help me to grow to be the person that God would have me to be. Teach me. Disciple me. Mentor me. Lead me. And I promise you I will. I'll see that you come to know Christ better than you've ever known Him before. And the rest of us this morning, I want us just to give thanksgiving to that precious, precious baby. Jesus, we thank you for dying for us and for loving us and saving us. We thank you for this wonderful musical today that's revealed that baby to us afresh and anew. Not a baby anymore. King of kings and Lord of lords, seated on the right hand of his Father in heaven, interceding for us today and drawing the lost to him. I, if I be lifted up, will draw men unto me. Thank you, Lord. Jesus, that you were lifted up. You laid down your life for us. You took it back up again. Thank you that you love me and everyone here that much. In his sweet name I pray. Amen. Tim, let's sing. Just in case someone needs to come this morning. Let's just sing one verse. Would you stand with me please and join me in, as we sing a hymn of invitation. And if you need to come this morning for whatever reason, I invite you to come. Just as I am. Just as I am.